watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Harump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Welcome to News 25 and Ace Country Radio and streaming at kpvm.tv. I am Rory Rossell on this Thursday, February 8th. Well, Henderson police announced that they made two arrests in connection to a deadly shooting from last month. Anthony Roberts has this story. Two additional arrests have been made in the fatal shooting of a teenager which occurred on January 25th of 2024. Today, the Henderson Police Department announced the arrest of Jarrell Reyes, age 51, and Brianna Reyes, age 50, for one count of child abuse and neglect. According to the report, on January 25th at approximately 7.15, police had begun an investigation of an alleged shooting in the 1000 block area of Capital Gaines Drive near Wigwam Parkway and Stephanie Street. According to detectives, they had determined that a 12-year-old child had shot their 14-year-old brother. Officers stated that the 14-year-old family had transported the victim to a nearby hospital where the staff had pronounced him deceased. The 12-year-old, who has not been identified due to his age, was booked into the Clark County Juvenile Hall on one count of open murder. News 25 will update you on this story as it develops. The five Marines who went missing are now confirmed dead by officials. The helicopter they were in crashed near San Diego in Pine Valley after it was set to head to Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. Both the identity of the Marines as well as the cause of death has yet to be released. Well, a two-vehicle crash happened Wednesday evening that sends three pieces three people to Desert View Hospital. Anthony, Anthony Roberts has more on this story. Jason Ernest of Mount West Lawyers. Don't be bullied by insurance companies. Call me, 775-727-9500. A two-vehicle crash occurred at approximately 4.20 p.m. on Wednesday evening at the intersection of Marie Street and Lola Lane. According to deputies at the scene, a postal vehicle was traveling eastbound on Marie Street when it collided with a black Lexus sedan that was traveling southbound on Lola Lane. Both driver and passenger of the sedan was transported to Desert Hospital as well as the driver of the postal vehicle. Mercy Air was not able to be utilized due to current weather conditions. Both vehicles sustained moderate to major damage. The Nye County Sheriff's Office, as well as Prompt Valley Fire and Rescue, were on scene. Lola Lane was closed to traffic in both directions during the investigation and cleanup. In international news, a UN agency has called for mental health resources for families in Gaza, as well as children in Israel. RJ Camacho has more on this story. The head of the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child has called for mental health support for kids and families within the Gaza Strip. Additionally, she has called for this massive psychosocial support for Israeli children as well, who were either victims or witnesses to the Hamas attack on southern Israel that occurred on October 7th. Anne Skelton referred to the death toll in Gaza, which has risen over 27,000. She pointed out that many of those deaths were of children as well. She went on to state that, no child should grow up in fear, pain, and hunger. Yet today, no child in Gaza is free from fear, pain, and hunger. In fact, they'll be considered lucky if they can even survive this war and have the chance to grow up. Skelton also stated that colossal humanitarian needs are being faced by the over 2 million people still alive within the Gaza Strip. Other than the mental health support for people in Gaza and children in Israel, she additionally called for the immediate and unconditional release of the hostages being held by Hamas, as well as calling for an immediate ceasefire. Meanwhile, the foreign minister for Egypt, Sameh Shukri, has called upon the international community to shoulder the responsibility of pushing for a ceasefire between between Israel and Hamas in order for humanitarian aid to reach the people of Gaza. Additionally, Shukri also called upon countries that suspended funding for the UNRWA to continue their support for the UN agency. He believes that the UNRWA's role in providing assistance and services to Palestinians in Gaza is indispensable, even though they have received some additional funding from Spain in order to stay afloat for the rest of the month, the lack of funding has hindered the agency's ability to aid Palestinians. 
Palestinians. He added that the UNRWA should not be tainted by any misactions of the few. He has additionally warned that the displacement of 1.3 million Palestinians in the south of Gaza has led to compounding conditions of famine, lack of medical supplies, and continuously dwindling sanitary conditions. Relating to Israel's offensive heading more south towards Egypt and Gaza's bordering town Rafah, the United Nations and Middle East envoy has warned of catastrophic consequences regarding the Israeli offensive. It was already reported by an Egyptian official that Israeli deployment along the Egypt-Gaza border would violate the peace treaty between them and Israel. However, conversations are being held by Israeli and Egyptian officials on what can be done about this. Lastly, an airstrike conducted by Israel has killed approximately 13 people in the town of Rafah, according to reports from a hospital that received the bodies. According to these reports, five of the 13 were children and two of the 13 were women. We'll have more news coming up after this break. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by Harumph's United Rentals. From home to job site, they have all your equipment needs. Call 775-990-4260. And welcome back to News 25. Well, News 25 spoke with candidate Tammy Pittman, who is running for county commissioner in Nye County District 3 to hear about her values, her plans, and what she offers what her, and what her opponents may not. Things that are most important to me, first of all, is water, because it is our most precious resource. And if we run out of water, our homes will be worthless <laughs> and we won't be living here. So it will be literally a ghost town. Secondly, I think it's really important to keep my county and Perm in, in a wonderful place to live, raise a family, and work. And to that end, we have to make sure we have the resources and spend our money wisely without putting the tax burdens so high that the, all the um, people who are on a fixed income, including myself, can work here and live here. On the topic of water, her main concern is the preservation of it. She says that some of the aquifer's water levels in the county are dropping. Now, there are parts of the valley where it's actually rising, but again, the, that water can't be transported across. It would be very expensive to do that. We're already going in the negative direction. That means we have to find ways to conserve what we have. In terms of fixed income, her concern comes from the spending of money that results in the raising of taxes. She worries about the burden that places, especially on those with a fixed income. Tammy Pittman also says that she'll always be concerned for the veteran community in Nye County, whether or not she's elected for commissioner of District 3. My husband served 20 years and I served 10. We belong to Combat Vets Motorcycle Association. One of the things we do there is to help people get what we call wind therapy or cycle therapy or two-wheel therapy, because when you're riding, you have to concentrate on the road, not on your problems. And it's really, it's conducive to more mental health. Uh, and my husband is a big member of the DAV where he helps people with their disability claims, and that's a passion of his, and I support him in that 24. Now, one of the big questions we had for Tammy Pittman was, what does she feel she offers that her opponents don't? She says her time in the military as an electronics technician and her degree in human resources are some of the things she feels she can offer to the community. So workers' comp, unemployment, benefits, compensation, training, all of these things, I wore every hat. And as a result, would be a benefit to the town, county, to understand all these things from behind, from a different perspective. Serve as a resource to the town manager. But she says there's one thing that truly sets her apart from the competition. I'm not a business owner in this town. I'm not going to be doing this to line my own pockets or to make for benefit for myself. I'm not going to be looking at anything from that perspective. And I'm also not going to be looking at it from sensationalism, trying to gain viewership, etc. So I think my motives are purely uh, 
for the best of the county. She had one last message for those who have been spreading rumors about her allegedly being in VEA's pocket. I volunteer at the VEA. It's the policy committee. I do that because, if you recall, there was a rather large fracas years ago where the EA was left in a financial ruin. I was really caught unawares, and I think a lot of us were. There was a lot of us who were very angry at our the district directors that had been voted in who didn't hold that executive director accountable. By volunteering there, I'm seeing what's happening on firsthand. And it's a passion of mine as well to make sure that it doesn't happen again. If you have any questions for Tammy Pittman, you can contact her by going to perumpforpittman.com or by calling her at 775-513-7162. If you'd like to see a change, if you'd like to see improvements, please vote for me. Thank you. The Valley Electric Association has some energy-saving tips for its members. This segment of News 25 is brought to you by Valley Electric and its family of companies focused on serving our members. We're better together. In today's world, energy efficiency isn't just a buzzword. It's a critical step towards sustainability and saving money. Let's explore some simple yet effective ways to make sure our homes are more energy efficient. First, turn off light switches when not in use. It's a small habit that can make a big difference in reducing energy consumption. Along with turning off switches, you should also unplug unused appliances or devices. These appliances can draw power even when not used. Addressing any leak faucets can also help reduce energy consumption, especially if it's a hot water leak. Similarly, ensure your well is in good working condition and there is no leaks in your water lines. Not only can leaks waste gallons of water, but they can also lead to a large unnecessary energy usage due to pump excessive cycling. Leaky doors and windows can also let precious heat escape during winter and cool air in the summer. Using weather stripping and caulking is a simple fix that can also improve your your home's energy efficiency and won't break the bank. Speaking of heating, some HVAC units have heat strips. Make sure your emergency heat isn't unnecessarily activated. Heat strips can be costly to run and, if left on, can consume a lot of energy. Regularly check your thermostat settings to ensure that you are using the most efficient heat settings. Wrapping your water heater is another step towards energy efficiency. Insulating it helps maintain water temperature, reducing the workload on your water heater, and reducing its energy consumption in the process. By implementing these simple strategies from turning off switches to addressing leaks and optimizing heating, we can all play a part in conserving energy and building a more sustainable future for generations to come. We'll have your weekend road trip tip after this break. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. And welcome back to News 25. The Nye County Water District has introduced a rebate promotion for the purchase of new water-efficient toilets. This week, the Nye County Water District launched a new program to help promote water conservation by offering a rebate to the public on purchasing new water-efficient toilets. According to Helene Williams from the Water District, the application is quite thorough. A receipt for both the purchase and the installation of the new water-efficient toilet, such as before and after photos, or an invoice from the plumber will be required before the rebate will be issued. The rebate covers up to $100 per 1.1 gallon flush toilet, or up to $50 per 1.28 gallon flush toilet. Dull flush toilets are not included in this rebate. The program also covers up to $20 on components that often leak, 
such as the flapper. To determine if your flapper is leaking, the water district will also provide detection tablets at no cost to the public. This toilet and flapper rebate is open to all Nye County property owners, residential and commercial. This rebate will only be issued once per property and taxes, installation fees, nor parts or supplies needed for the installation will not be included in the rebate. The rebate application can be found online at nycountywaterdistrict.net or for more information, you can contact the Water District by calling 775-727-3487. Well, now here's Mikey with your weekend road trip tip. Looking to get away this weekend? Here's Park Ranger from Death Valley National Park to tell us all about how you can get your own private tour to Scotty's Castle. Everyone knows this place as Scotty's Castle, but in truth, Scotty never owned it. Scotty was a con man who claimed to have a gold mine out here in Death Valley. He used the scary reputation of this place to get his investors to give him money, believing that they were going to get gold from his gold mine in return. After two years of investing in Scotty, a man named Albert Johnson came out to Death Valley in the early 1900s to inspect his gold mine. That was a big problem for Scotty because he didn't even have a dry hole in the ground to show him. He was just using this place's scary reputation to keep people away. So what Scotty did is he arranged for his brother and his two friends to help him by pretending to be bandits, pretending to be, attack the wagon train where Scotty and Johnson were. This was 1906 as they were coming into Death Valley. And they hid behind some rocks. They were shooting their guns down at Scotty and Johnson. They were just supposed to shoot high in the sky, but possibly due to too much whiskey, they actually shot one of Scotty's brothers in the hip. And that's when Scotty stopped pretending to shoot back at them, put his gun down and said, stop shooting, you fools. You shot my brother Warner. And then the bandits came down and apologized. And so the rich man, Albert Johnson, realized at that point there was no gold mine. This man that was his business partner arranged for these other people to shoot at him. He could have been killed. Any normal person would have been really mad at this point maybe shot back themselves, maybe got the law involved, but the, our story gets really weird at that point. Albert Johnson was having the time of his life out here in a Wild West gunfight with a cowboy trained by Buffalo Bill that had worked in the Wild West show. That was Scotty. And so he went back to his home in Chicago, didn't tell anyone that he had been <laughs> lied to, and kept sending Scotty money. He then Albert Johnson started bringing his wife, Bessie Johnson, out every year or two to vacation here in Death Valley. And eventually, they gave up the charade of a gold mine, built this vacation home, and Scotty was their personal entertainer. So that is the story of Scotty's Castle. Scotty's Castle is still closed while we are repairing damage done by a flood that happened in 2015. We hope to be fully back open by the end of 2025. But in the meantime, People can come on limited tours Sundays only through early April by signing up at dvnha.org is the website to sign up for those once a week tours only on Sundays to see the construction happening, to learn about the story, and to see the castle and learn about the history. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. The weather is better than it has the last few days. Mikey is going to have your weather forecast coming up after the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. I'm Mike Ruhan from the Channel 25 weather studios. 
and streaming to your mobile device at www.kpvm.tv. Check out this weather map. Fernley saw 43 degrees, Fallon 45, Carson City at 41, Tonopah saw 37, Goldfield was at 38, Beatty 43, Amargosa 48, Las Vegas 46, out in Death Valley, looks pretty nice, 59 degrees, but here in the paradise of Pahrump, our current temperature is 44 degrees, we hit 45 just a little bit earlier, winds south-southeast out of, at 4 miles per hour, Humidity was 69%, and the sun rose at 638, setting this evening at 517. That was just a little bit ago. We're going down to 34 tonight, with the humidity going up to 78%. How does that set us up for the seven-day forecast? Well, tomorrow we'll get through it. A little bit cloudy. But Saturday and Sunday, what is that orange thing? Yellow? It looks like sunshine. We creep back up into the 50s, and by Wednesday... That is the day I suggest you call in sick to work. 60 degrees and sunshine. Can't wait. Back to the desk. Here's Rory. Thank you so much, Mikey. Well, that is going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I am Rory Rossell. Everybody have a safe night, and I'll see you tomorrow.